Okay, Hello students. So today uh, we will discuss about liquid liquid extraction, which is a type of mass transfer uh, unit operation. So when you say liquid liquid extraction, generally it's a mass transfer operation in which a solution or a feed. So this feed, uh, which is a mixture of a solute and a carrier liquid, so the feed will be a mixture of some solute and some carrier liquid. And this feed is brought into an intimate contact with a second uh, liquid, which is uh, immiscible or slightly miscible liquid with the uh, solute or the carrier liquid. So this is called this second uh, miscible or slightly miscible liquid is called solvent. So the feed is uh, brought into intimate contact with this solvent. So in order to achieve transfer of solute from the feed to the solvent. So in this case, when the solvent is added to the, the, the feed and with some uh, mixing or uh, some application of external force, then there will be a transfer of solute uh, from the carrier liquid or from the feed to the solvent. So the separation uh, will occur. So this, uh, the, so in this case, you will find two liquid phases. Two liquid phases will be formed. So these two liquid phases, uh, they have different densities. Uh, therefore, they will be uh, separate. They can be separated based on their density difference. So you will have some uh, one one phase of li one liquid phase which will be uh, rich in the solute. So one will be rich in the solute. So it's called extract, and the other residue which uh, with little or no amount of solute uh, solute is called raffinate. So as soon as separation occurs, you will find two phases, which uh, the one which is, you call it extract. So the extract will be uh, rich in a solute, I mean in a solute, and the raffinate will have a small amount of uh, uh, solute will be present. So simply, uh, this liquid-liquid extraction can be exp uh, represented with uh, this diagram. So this is a single stage extraction, that means the solution or the feed and the solvent will be contacted uh, in one stage. So here you have a solution, which is the feed, uh, which contains the solute plus some carrier liquid. Then you have a solvent. So this solvent and solution will be mixed uh, in a mixer and then separation will occur based on their density differences. So then you, after separation, you'll have an extract. So this extract will contain uh, uh, high amount of uh, solute and the, you have a raffinate which contains only small amount of zero amount of solute. So basically you can uh, see here uh, simple representation for liquid liquid extraction. So here you have a solvent. This solvent will have some solute. The solute is here represented in black and the carrier liquid is uh, in green. Then you have some aqueous solvent. So after some mixing, after mixing and uh, after, you, after you let them settle, this at the bottom is called raffinate, which contains no or small amount of solute, and this will be called uh, the extract phase. So you can separate these two liquid uh, phases by uh, physical means, or you just you can uh, separate them based on their density difference. So you can also have a multi multi uh, contact system for. Uh, multi-contact system in liquid-liquid uh, extraction. So in this case, for example, uh, this multi-contact system is required if you have large amount of solute present in the raffinate. And also, uh, if you have some unwanted uh, solvent or unwanted carrier liquid in the extract. So here, you can mix them here. You can mix the solvent and the solution here. Then you have a separator where you separate uh, the extract and the raffinate. Then again, the raffinate will be Add it with, with mix it with another solvent to also again remove uh, to separate the solute from the raffinate or the remaining solute that existed in the raffinate. Then you can uh, go to another separation process so that here the solute content in the raffinate throughout the stage will be reduced uh, and the extract will be collected finally. Uh, after the last stage of separation. So here you can also have a multi-contact system. So in the multi-contact system, you can also uh, use, uh, for example, here after the extract is produced, so the extract will be filled with uh, solute and also 
solvent. This it's a mixture of solute and solvent. So after uh, from this extract, you can use distillation to separate the solvent with the solute. So different uh, methods of separation can occur after the liquid liquid extraction process. So in general. The general steps are uh, extraction has four steps. The first one will be here. You have to bring the feed and the solvent into intimate contact by uh, dispersing one phase into the other as droplets. Then you can have a separation of the extract in the raffinate phase that have different densities. Then you can remove the re uh, removal and recovery of solute from the extract phase in a relatively pure form. So you can use uh, distillation. Uh, evaporation or crystallization so here in the extract which contains high amount of solid so if you want to, your solid to be in a pure form then this extract has to be separated by another mass transfer or thermal interpretation process like distillation evaporation and crystallization so and you can also uh, remove or and recovery of the solvent from each phase uh, usually by distillation so you could also recover the solvent you can recover, recover the solvent from the extract in the raffinate phase and recycle it back to the liquid-liquid uh, extraction unit or the mixer or the liquid-liquid uh, extraction column. So these are the basic steps in uh, solid-liquid extraction. So what what is the basic difference uh, between liquid-liquid uh, extraction and distillation? Well, basically, in this case, separation of these uh, compounds in liquid-liquid extraction is based on uh, solvent selectivity and difference in solubilities when you compare it to uh, distillation because distillation the separation is based on the difference in volatility or in the difference in boiling point so the major factors that affect uh, liquid liquid extraction is the solvent selectivity or the difference in solubility of the components when you compare it with distillation where distillation use boiling point difference so when is this liquid-liquid extraction important? For example, if you have two components with close boiling point, or if the components the components have uh, similar vapor pressure, or with close boiling point, or if they can if they form isotropic uh, uh, system, then you can use liquid-liquid extraction to separate this component. For example, aromatic compounds that have uh, small uh, relative volatility. So if you have some a big compound which have aromatic compounds and those aromatic compounds have similar uh, small relative volatility or their boiling point difference is very close then you can use liquid liquid extraction and the other is for separation of uh, heat sensitive material for example here distillation uh, for example in distillation you apply some heat uh, to make uh, the components volat uh, volatile or to vaporize the components but if you have if the components are heat sensitive material, for example, like antibiotic, vitamins, and penicillin, then in this case, uh, liquid liquid extraction is uh, important. In the other, you could also use it for recovery of non volatile solute. So, if your solute is non volatile, so it will be difficult to use distillation in this case uh, when you compare it with distillation. So, you can use liquid liquid extraction if your components is non volatile or uh, their volatility is uh, very low. And you can also use for recovery of solute from uh, dilute solution. In this case, you can uh, you can use liquid liquid extraction or liquid liquid extraction can be handy in such kind of uh, situations. Then, what are the factors affecting uh, liquid liquid extraction? Uh, basically, temperature. Uh, for example, for liquid liquid extraction to occur, one has to be one component has to be soluble in the other component. So, therefore. Uh, solubility is one factor and the other is solvent selection for example if you see temperature when you when there is a change in temperature then the solubility or the miscibility of the components uh, will be different so if you increase for example the temperature then the miscibility will increase or the solubility of the components uh, increase therefore temperature basically affects the liquid liquid extraction so you can operate at different temperature so that more solute can be transferred into the solid or to increase the solubility and the other is basically solvent selection so your solvent uh, uh, has to be selected so that uh, this solvent is very miscible or at least partially miscible with the solute so for example for solvent selection you require selectivity which is a separation factor it's a preferential uptake of the solute by the solvent 
and only uh, the active agent has to be extracted. So this is the selection factor of the solute by the solvent. So your, your solvent has to be, so that in this case, when you say the separation factor is higher or the selectivity is higher, that means your solute, uh, the uptake of the solute by the solvent will be higher. And the other is capacity, so you have to reduce the amount of necessary solvent capacity, so your ratio of solvent to the feed has to uh, be affected. The capacity has to be very low. With a small amount of solvent, you have to uh, extract uh, maybe large amount of uh, solute. So this one is also one factor. The other is miscibility. So uh, miscibility, so if you want to achieve simple regeneration of the solvent, then miscibility, uh, the miscibility has to be low. And the other is difference in density. Therefore, your solvent has to have a difference in density with the carrier liquid so the separation can be uh, easier and uh, surface tension viscosity chemical and thermal stability are the other factors which affect uh, the solvent selection so basically temperature and solvent selection uh, or the solubility of the solvent with the solute is one uh, major factors that affect uh, liquid liquid extraction where can we apply uh, liquid liquid extraction you can use liquid liquid extraction as we said before for uh, specific uh, situations uh, as uh, explained in the previous slide but for example you can use the, uh, liquid liquid extraction basically in uh, extraction of phenol from coal tar liquors and uh, in metallurgical and biotechnology industries petroleum or in uh, natural gas production in metallurgical and biotechnology uh, industries you can also use for example the separation of aromatics from paraffin and uh, naphthenic compounds to improve the temperature viscosity characteristics of the uh, lubricant oils or you can also uh, see them in you can also uh, use separation of aromatic from kerosene kerosene based uh, fuel oils so that the, their burning qualities can be uh, improved you can use uh, liquid liquid extraction for the purification of uh, uranium fuel and for the recovery of uh, spent fuel elements uh, in nuclear power industry. So you have different applications that in the uh, petroleum or uh, gas production industries, metallurgical and biotechnology industry. For example, biotechnology like production of penicillin, vitamins and antibiotics, basically they use liquid liquid extraction. Uh, to determine uh, the basic parameters or to design uh, liquid liquid extraction uh, process or equipment there will be a uh, liquid liquid equilibrium so in liquid liquid extraction system at least you'll have three components the first one will be carrier liquid in the feed which which we are going to represent it by a so when it, whenever we say a that means it's a carrier liquid in the feed and whenever you say b we are representing b as uh, extracting solvent and the solute you have a solute which is represented by C. So the feed will contain A, which is the carrier uh, liquid, and C, which is the solute. So you are going to add this extracting solvent so that you are going to separate this solute into extract and also uh, to raffinate. So these three components will have three binary mixtures. So you can have AB, uh, BC, and CA components. So the mutual miscibility behavior of the components in each of uh, these binaries determine the nature of a uh, equilibrium diagram for tenorally system. So, for example, if you, for example, if A and B are immiscible, you can have such kind of uh, uh, mixtures, or you can have you can find C, which is miscible with A, so the solute is miscible with the carrier liquid, and also with the solvent, but the solvent in the uh, the solvent in the uh, carrier liquid or A and B are partially miscible or you can have a solute which is completely miscible with the uh, carrier or with A but both C and A have limited miscibility with B. So you can have such three types of uh, situations. So based on these situations your ternary diagram that means uh, the diagram which the ternary system in which you are going to determine the equilibrium points uh, will be affected. So how are you going to determine the uh, uh, equilibrium points, the equilibrium uh, liquid-liquid equilibrium to collect some experimental data? So 
the first thing we are going to do is a suitable amount of pure A, B, and C is taken at a constant temperature. So you select, for example, some 20% uh, A, 30% uh, B, and 50% C, uh, or any uh, selected uh, percentage of these three components, and you are going to mix it. So you are going to take constant temperature of those components for the system. The, the system has to be at constant temperature. So you select suitable amount of pure A, B, and C, and they are mixed uh, vigorously for a sufficient time to ensure the attainment of equilibrium. Then you are going to allow the, 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 the mixture uh, to be separated into two phases because of the density difference. Then you are going to take, you are going to select uh, samples from the uh, two phases, the extract and the raffinate phase. And you are going to measure the concentration A, B, and C, how much is available in the, how much percent of A is available in the extract and also in the raffinate, and also how much percent of B is available in the uh, uh, extract and in the raffinate and also how much C is available in the extract and in the raffinate phase. So you can put them in terms of mass percent or mole percent or mole fraction or uh, mass fraction. So you repeat, this experiment will be conducted for different amounts of the three components at a constant temperature. So this experiment is are conducted for different amounts of the three components at a constant temperature. So finally, you will get uh, data for the uh, construction of this liquid-liquid uh, equilibrium diagram. So the liquid-liquid equilibrium diagram, since you have three components, three components, then you are going to use a ternary diagram or a ternary system. So this ternary system, uh, which is uh, represented with uh, equilateral uh, triangle, equilateral triangle. So the, when you say equilateral, that means this side, this side, and this side are uh, equal. Uh, in length. So you can express uh, this, uh, the composition of the equilibrium composition in the extract and in the raffinate phase in terms of mass fraction or mole fraction. So their sum will be unity. That means uh, when you measure, uh, when you add the compositions of A, B, and C, then their final sum will be unity or 100%. This is A, when you say A, this is the carrier liquid. This point will show 100% A, that means pure A. Here, here is the solvent. This point shows the solvent. So when you say 100% B, that means this point shows pure solvent composition. And this point shows pure uh, solute composition. So if you take only this side, if you take only this side, AC from point A, from 100% A to 100% C, to in this point, that means only A and C are present. If you take these vertices or this side, this side A or BC, then at this point, at this point, only B and C exist. And if you take AB, the, this line, AB line, in this case, only A and B exist. So on own triangle, you have a binary system, but inside this triangle, you will have, for example, if you take point M, point M will have both A, B, and C. At this point, you'll have a mixture with the mix, uh, 